Yo, it's Craig, and this is a guy for the last wish raid as of 2022. This is a guide meant to be a intro slash refresher to the raid, so you can hopefully run the raid for yourself through things like LFG. So the strats are far from optimal, and wish farmers definitely have it down better, but this is how a lot of people run it, and how most people are going to run the raid through things like LFG, even though it's definitely not the best place at all to actually learn the raid. Loadout recommendations will be shown at the beginning of each encounter, and quick before we get into the guide, 99% of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed, so please sub and interact with the video, comment and like and all that shit. It really does help smaller creators like me actually reach recommended and reach all of that kind of stuff and help channels grow, and hopefully it'll make it so more people actually know what they're doing. And Thank you so much for everyone that supports everything I do. Without further ado, thank you for watching, and let's start the game. Kali and Shirochi have a higher than average crit multiplier, so for DPS you will want to use precision weapons. Things like slugs and snipers, and also linears, are going to be optimal for damage here. Having a debuff is also usually nice, so something like tractor or tether does help. However, do not run Divinity because it actually reduces the amount of damage you do because of the higher crit multiplier on the bosses. Titans can really run whatever, none of yourself really helps too much. If you want to run older to stay alive or Thundercash for a little bit of damage, Warlocks usually want to be on well for the most part. And Hunters can either be on Tether for a debuff or something like Celestial Nighthawk or Star Eaters with Precision Golden Gun because of that higher crit multiplier. And of course, if you have Taken spec, you will want to use that for all encounters going forward in this raid. However, because it does RNG drop from this raid, a lot of people will not have it, especially if you literally haven't ran the raid before. There are two ways to do the first boss. The very common way is the cheese, where you have someone with either Anarchy or Necrotic Grips and everyone else sitting near a plate. I'll be using Anarchy as an example because of Necrotics is only usable on Warlock, however it's basically the same concept. Have a teammate step on a plate, and before the boss teleports it will briefly lose its immunity shield before it teleports. When this happens, stick the boss with Anarchy before she teleports, and then go over to the plate where your teammates are. She will then teleport to the plate that is the one being stepped on, and you will just retake the boss with Anarchy, and when this is done correctly she will not teleport away, and you'll be free to damage her and avoid all mechanics. Just keep shooting the boss until she's dead. The way to do this fight legit is first by looking at the symbols hanging in the middle arena around the boss. These will correlate to plates around the arena and you will want each person standing by a plate that matches one of the symbols in the middle. By activating these plates you will open a door to avoid deaths during damage, so if a plate is either missed or an incorrect plate is stepped on, you will lose a door for damage and basically guaranteeing one death per damage phase. If an incorrect plate is activated it will spawn and take an ogre in the middle, however unless someone isn't wearing their glasses this should pretty much never happen. Step on a plate or shoot the boss to start the encounter. The plate is split into three parts by lines which are quite obvious. Two thirds of the play will be covered in Taken self with a Taken ball floating above it. You'll want to be standing on the one third that is Taken free and wait for the balls to explode, then move to the new one third that is Taken free. Keep doing this until a Taken Knight spawns in front of you and kill your Taken Knight. After killing your Taken Knight, your door will be able to be activated, so you can now go to the middle for DPS. When the boss teleports to the middle around the arena, you start DPS and you will just unload on the boss. When the boss starts doing some Super Saiyan Vegeta shit, doors below her will open. There will be doors open for each plate that was activated, so there should be six. Each person will want to go into one of the doors and you cannot have multiple people in the same one as both will die. Everyone find a door and then the boss will do a blast and anyone not in a door will die. Make sure that you are only using the doors under where the boss is as they will be open all around you, but only use the doors under where the boss is currently. After the explosion, your door will open, run out, and continue with DPS. You can do this up to three times, and hopefully the boss should die. It's a very easy one phase, but if you do need multiple phases, just repeat what you did before, and after that, it's the end of the encounter.
the fights again? Yeah. She is. He's ugly. I called your mom. <laughs> there is a secret chest on your way to the next encounter. While on the bridge, hop down and open the secret chest, then go through the portal, then progress your way to the next encounter. You have my thanks, Guardian. But my sister Hero TD's nuts. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Find her, safe, and know this. Okay, now it's everyone's favorite encounter. The nut encounter. Yeah, you just you guys point the nuts at each other. Mm. Oh, bro, you know I thought my nuts at each other. Nut, nut. Nut, nut. Nut, nut, nut. The last fish. <laughs> the encounter that makes LFG forget that Wishwall exists because they don't have enough brain cells to Google or use two minutes of their time shooting a wall. For this encounter, it is mainly Ackler and a small amount of DPS. As I mentioned in the last encounter, this boss has a higher than average crit multiplier, so crit based weapons like slugs are highly recommended. For other weapons, I would highly recommend some form of strong Ackler like Trinity Ghoul or Waveframe GL, etc. For heavy, I would usually recommend something like a sword. You can use a linear or a rocket maybe, but I would usually recommend a sword as it gives you a bit more leeway during puzzles and is good for DPS in a pinch if you need it. Having someone on tractor cannon for consistent debuff of every single damage phase is also very welcome because most of the time half of your team is going to be at the next damage spot before half of her chunk of health is gone anyway, so you have to make it up somehow. As for supers, I would recommend strong ad clear supers. For Titans, I would usually recommend Solar, just strong and clear in general, and also it's very hard to die with. For Warlocks, run Well of Radiance as it can make damage and puzzle rooms easier, or you can run Void for Nova and Devour, which makes clearing out adds and giant groups of adds very, very easy. For Hunters, usually recommend Solar if you want to run Nighthawk to make boss damage even easier, or much like Nova Warlock, if you want to run Blade Barrage to kill giant groups of as or a high priority target, feel free to do so. If you want to run Void or something for ag clear or debuff on the boss side is also more than acceptable. If you're on Solar on any class, I would highly recommend running Healing Nades as they're very nice for the puzzle and can allow you to save your teammates and yourself from dumb wipes. This encounter is easy, phases of boss DPS with a lot of trash ads in between. The faster you kill ads, the faster you will progress the encounter, which makes you reach damage faster, which means you have more time for the puzzle room. When starting the encounter, you will see you have a debuff called Shiro Chi's Song, and when that timer reaches zero, you will wipe. The way to reset this timer is by completing the puzzle on that floor, so you want to be as quick as possible. Making sure that all adds die, especially majors like taking captains and ogres, as the encounter will not progress if adds are alive. Eventually, after clearing enough adds, crystals will spawn on the three plates around the boss. Standing on these plates will damage you, 
but if you do stand on them with the Taken Crystal, it will fire a laser beam. All three crystal holders will want to jump on at around the same time onto the plates. You will then fire your laser at the person to your right and make sure that you form a triangle around the boss. This will remove the boss's shield and allow for DPS. The boss will attempt to wipe your team, but if people are shooting the boss, it really shouldn't be an issue at all. The Taken Essence that is drafted by the Eye of Ribbon, which is the Taken Captain, is used to stop the boss from wiping you. However, you really should never need to pick this up because you should have more than enough DPS anyway. But if you do really need to, that's what it's used for. You then repeat this and add clear more and do one more damage phase until you reach the puzzle room. After doing damage twice, you reach the puzzle room and there will be a symbol on the left wall when you enter and it will have four chunks of it missing. Think of the symbol split up like a game of tic-tac-toe. It's split into nine parts and four of them are missing. If you look in the middle, there will be nine plates. So what you must do is step on the four plates that correspond to the missing parts of the symbol. You are doing this from the point of view looking at the symbol. For example, if it's the one on the left wall, you're looking at it straight forward. Make sure that you are not looking the wrong way. You want to hop on the plates that are corresponded with the ones missing at relatively the same time as each other. So communicate with your teammates to make sure everyone is in position to hop on at the same time. If you do not have a plate, please make sure you are killing ads as fast as possible especially the phalanxes as they can boot people off of their plates and cause very easy wipes even if one boop happens. You can use healing nades, wrists, wells, blocking with your sword to take reduced damage from the plate so you can stay on there longer. Once you stand on a plate you cannot stand on it again and it will glow red so make sure that you do not step on the same plate multiple times. Say that you jump on a plate then jump off if you jump on again, it will be red, and it will not activate anything, so you must swap with someone else. Try to keep track of which plates you have stood on already. After you complete the one on the left wall, it will then move to the one in the middle. Make sure you are facing the right way, and then jump on the four plates. Then it will do that one more time on the right, and after all three puzzles are successfully completed, Half spheres will drop down from the ceiling for you to jump on up to the next floor. Repeat this process two more times, and the boss will be dead. Yeah. Imagine if it was half, if it was three. Then it can't be like a minute and a half. Yeah, it's to space yeah. out more, more ads. That's what I mean. Pop. Oh, I got boot top. Someone grab that uh, top. Oh, Three, jump. two, one. Shoot me, shoot me. Oh, he did, I forgot. <laughs> he just started running. Yeah. <laughs> what happens if you don't make the damage? You what? won. Oh, uh, yeah, you just won. That's kind of funny. I fiddle. Oh, okay, bottom. Bottom left. Bottom Three, left. Two, okay, I'll get bottom mid. One. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Pick the mid. Yeah. Jump! Okay. Jump! Jump. There you go. I have top left. Top left. I got I got okay. bottom. I'll get I'll get bottom left or mid left. Yeah. Right. Three, two, one, go. Yep. I have I got, top mid, top mid. I'll, I'll, take I'll get I'll bottom take right. right. I'll take mid. Three, two, one, go. So get that out there. Get top right. Ah! Oh. I'll get that one phase in. And... Oh, the nuts are spinning!
Why is it so hard for to find a group in this raid? Because when know. it's not <laughs> pinnacle, we no one wants to run it. Everyone wants to do only the boss, the farm from the time. No, no, no. The 1k. Yeah. 1k, I got that. Go, bro. Alright, 3, on. 2, 1. one yeah, 1k isn't even good. Like, at all. Yeah, That's what I don't like about this game. You hit some crazy thing. And it's useless. What's the point? When you can get a sword and get free. Or a rocky you get for free. Yeah, Golden yeah. bad. <laughs> I'm good. So now it's big ogre man, lady? Yeah. Whole jumping puzzle and ogre. I hate jumping puzzles. Fly off the map. So you can say you won today. Favorite. You saved my sister. Thank you. So after we kill ogre, dude. That's when we got shoot the egg. One egg on the way from Ogre. There is a secret chest before the next encounter, before you go into the Taken Realm jump puzzle. Make your way over to the tree and hop up it, and then hop up and go forward and you will see the chest. Secret chest or is this the way? Secret chest. Uh, secret chest is on me. My guy. I don't even want it. it should have been on like Warlock or something. If I know. Warlock. Encounter, I just picked up the for loadouts. Warlock should be on well of radiance. Titans, it really doesn't matter what you're on. Hunter is probably Goldie or Blade Barrage or Tether for debuff if you need it. As for weapons, strong, bristly, fast weapons, along with a good Eclair primary, are probably your best options. Things like Rocket Spin with Galley, Izzy Rocket, Linears, etc., will work here. Also, if you want to, you can throw in a tractor cannon for the debuff. This encounter can get pretty chaotic as a lot of people don't really know how to do it very well or organize at all and it's usually just chaos but I'll be explaining the mechanics for a more chaotic version as well as a more orly strat that can be done. The main mechanic of this encounter are the taken orbs that you will see floating. By jumping in the middle of one of these you will start the encounter. After you're jumping through one of these you will pick it up and gain a stack of taken strength. You can hold up to two of these debuffs, however, if you ever grab more than two, you will instantly die, and the Taken Strength will just respawn throughout the arena. Periodically, throughout the encounter, Morgath will detain someone with Taken Strength, prioritizing the people with two Taken Strength over those with only one. The way to free these people and save them is by stealing the Taken Strength using the Taken Essence. The Taken Essence is dropped by Eyes of Riven, which are Solar Sealed Captains. You can pick up the Essence and then run over and stand by the person that is detained, and by clicking your grenade button, you will steal their taken strength from them. However, if you are freeing someone, you want to make sure you have zero taken strength, because it will take their taken strength from them, and if it puts you over two, it will instantly kill you, and it will still put it back into the pool. Picking up the strength slows the boss actually gaining strength, which you will see up here above your super bar, when the boss reaches 100% strength, he will instantly wipe your team. So, our goal is to pick up all the taken strength and free people from being trapped on your team. We start DPS by picking up the last taken strength, which will be spawned in the middle. 
and we usually have the person who starts the encounter by grabbing the first one also grab the very last one. The person who grabs the first one should never grab taken strength throughout the encounter except for that very last one. Lots of people for more chaotic strat will have one person on each side pick up the two that spawn near the start, the Morgoth will randomly detain one of them and someone must free them using the taken essence. You then repeat this until you have grabbed all the taken strength and the taken strength spawns in the middle where the person who started it grabs it. Have the person who picked up the first one grab the last one and then start DPS. For a more organized way, you can have each person on left grab one and then the person on right grab two. This will then force Morgoth to detain the person on right, making it easier to get the detain free and also just making it more organized in general. Once you have two taken strength, I usually recommend going more towards the middle of the arena as it's much easier to reach you depending on where the taken essence actually spawns. Repeat this is the same thing that you did previously until the one spawns in the middle. After you grab that, you are going to shoot the giant zit on the boss's back and for the most part ignore the axions that are flying towards you and just shoot him. You can do damage either on the bridge, kind of by where the flag is, make sure you're in a well, or you can do it on the stairs behind him towards the door towards the next encounter. It's kind of up to you on that one and your team. After the boss is dead, you just move on to vault. Volt has a reputation of being insanely difficult due to how long it took teams on day one, however in reality it's probably the easiest encounter of the entire raid along with Kali. For loadout, strong ad clear supers and burst damage supers are going to be preferred here. Times things like solar or thunder crash to be able to instantly kill knights is very useful, warlocks on solar for well and strong nades, or void for nova bomb to be able to instantly kill knights or to be able to use blink. Hunters, really any of your things work, but usually Solar Void will be your best options, but up to you. As for weapons, Tractor Cannon is very good here as it blinds the knights and stops them from sprinting. This paired with a slug or a fusion rifle makes the knights very easy to deal with. If you don't want to use Tractor Cannon or don't have it, swords like Lament or a good legendary sword are also not bad options. You can run rockets and stuff as well but you do gotta be very careful to not blow yourself up as the room isn't that large. This is going to sound overly confusing, but as long as you have eyes and know your lefts and rights, trust me, you'll be fine. You'll split into three groups of two, each group being responsible for your side. The encounter is split into four parts, the middle kind of area, where everyone kind of is, as well as trees, rock, and stairs rooms. Each team will be responsible for a room, one for reading, and one strictly for ad clear. The people on ad clear, your job is very self-explanatory, just kill the ads as fast as possible, but prioritize the taken knights that spawn in the back of your room. The reason you prioritize the knights is because if they do reach the plate and sacrifice, it will wipe your team. So this is why you want to kill them as fast as possible, use your heavy and or tractor cannon plus slug slash fusion rifle. Say you are in a room and your knight gets past you and you're locked in, you must then call out your side and that your knight has gone through and most of the time people are able to help you kill it, however you should never rely on this. You can either be in your room or outside of it, it doesn't really matter too much on Eclair, keep in mind that you will be most of the time locked out of entering or leaving your room. Readers are going to be actually doing the mechanics. Each reader stands on their plate by their room and when all three are being stood on, you will see three symbols in a horizontal line in front of you. There are multiple ways to call this and different orders people do it, so I'm really just going to explain the mechanic and you can call out however your team wants. Basically, each person has a middle symbol and two side symbols, one on the left, one on the right. Your middle symbol is a match with someone else's side symbol. Whoever has the matching side symbol then has to check if it's either left or right. If the symbol is on the left, you call out your side and it's pen umbra. And if it's on the right, then it is Ant Umbra. Do this for at least two of the plates and figure out if that plate is either Ant Umbra or Pen Umbra. As the last one can just be figured out using process of elimination, you don't have to worry about the third one. So for example, if Sarah's middle symbol is Eight Snake and Trees has that symbol on the right, they will call out Trees Ant or type TA. This has to be done for a minimum of two of the plates to avoid any guessing. Once you have your two callouts, taken walls will block off two of the rooms and leave one open. 
The reader for the open room will then go in and kill ads until an Eye of Ribbon spawns. Kill it and pick up the Taken Essence and look at your buffs. It will be either Penumbra or Antumbra and one of the other rooms will now be open. Have your teammates call this out and use the tunnels to go in between the sides. To go to the correct room to be able to get out, make sure that you're going the correct way and not going the long way around. You then go to the plate that is either Penumbra or Antumbra depending on which one you are holding. While standing on the plate, hit your grenade button and it will cleanse the plate. The person whose door is open then repeats this process until all three plates have been cleansed. There is a timer that when it reaches zero will wipe your team so attempting to be fast and complete the round will make it so you don't cause wipes. The way that you can figure out all the plates while only having two callouts is there can only be up to two ant or two pen plates, not all three can be ant, not all three can be pen. So if the first one is ant, then the second one is pen, then the last one of course is just implied, right? However, say the first one is pen and the next one you didn't actually get the call out for, but you grab pen again, then you know it's pen. It's very self-explanatory, it's just simple process of elimination, kind of common sense. After all the plates have been cleansed, you stand back on your plate and read again, and you do this a total of three times. After this is done, the counter is over and you can move on to ribbon of a thousand voices. I'll start off by explaining Riven Cheese, that's it's what most people do and a large majority of the player base has never done Riven legit, let alone know how it actually works. Feel free to use the chapters or timestamps in the description if you want to skip to your preferred explanation, either legit or cheese. For Riven Cheese, for loadouts, one Warlock should be on Well of Radiance and all other Warlocks should be on Nova Mom. Time should be on Thundercrash and Hunters should probably be on Blade Barrage with Star Eaters. You want to be running Laments and you want to have one person on Tractor Cannon. If you are running Lament, if you have the Arc Charge with Light Mod and Lucent Blade, I would highly recommend running that in some way of getting charged with Light Stacks. If you are the person on Tractor Cannon, I would usually recommend pairing it with something like a Fusion Rifle, like a Cartesian with Vorpal, etc. If you do not own a Lament or don't have Tractor, Run your best legendary sword like Fallen Guillotine or something and throw in a Wither Horde or 4th Horseman I guess even for some extra DPS. With 5 people on Lament and 1 person on Tractor you should have more than enough damage. If you have a different set of loadouts your damage may be a bit tighter. You can also do Linears but I personally find Lament and just Sword Strat in general much more consistent however it is dependent on the team. Start the encounter by having each person stand on a plate and drop down. Everyone wants to quickly make it through yeah, the side with the blue crystal yeah. in front of it and up the uh, stairs. The door will close and if you get closed out, you will die, usually causing a so wipe. Far. There are multiple ways to tell where room yeah, will be, but the most common one is to walk into the crystal room yeah. and look at the yeah. black wall and look for a shadow. If she appears, stay, and yeah. if her shadow yeah. hasn't appeared for a few seconds that. after all the ads have spawned, yeah, you'll want to run into house. the room that you just came from and hug a wall so that you see joining yeah, allies. Get the you're After joining allies, you will be where you started the encounter, the plate, and you'll want to run to your right up the kind of mini staircase there, and drop down and continue forward, drop down one more time until you reach the trees room. Both sides, you will wait in your room until the boss comes, and then pop a well right next to the left paw and do damage. Make sure that you tractor the boss at the very start, and you charge your lament while weaving in uncharged attacks to rebuild sword energy. In Crystal Room, you have a lot more time before the boss comes as you don't have to waste time running all the way to Tree's Room, but in Tree's Room, the boss comes relatively soon right after you enter the room. Do enough damage to push the boss into final stand and you will be teleported into the Taken Realm. You will then have to parkour your way up trying not to get booed by Phalanxes and have at least one person reach a Taken Strength at the top. After one person grabs it, everyone will be teleported back into the normal realm, yeah. and the boss will pop out in front of you for final stand. Just kill the boss like normal and wait for the boss's mouth to open. I kept on trying then to run inside the mouth, pull a heart, and that's the end of the encounter. So for Riven legit loadout, I would usually recommend yeah. as of right now linears and probably a sniper rifle, and then plus whatever kind of accolade you would like. For supers, Titans doesn't really matter what you are on. Hunters, probably Nighthawk and or Precision Goldie with Star Eaters, kind of up to you there. 
or tether if you really want to debuff. I'm gonna go right. Warlocks and should all be on well of radiance. My six man good. Riven legit is a bit rusty, uh, but the, the mechanics guy. are just still the same. Left. I've just only had oh, to do man. Riven legit for trio. So. Yeah, three people go to crystal side, three people go to tree side after dropping down. Go into your room and clear out ads. The boss will then show up in one of the two rooms, either spitting fire or with its tentacles out. If the boss is shooting fire, dodge the fire, then shoot the boss's mouth until it's stunned. If the boss has its tentacles out, go close to it and bait for the boss to slam his tentacle. After oh, it slams, okay. shoot the glowing tentacle to stun the boss. <clears throat> After the boss is stunned, the boss will have two eyes glowing. There are different ways that people call out their eyes, either L1 through 5 and R1 through 5, or just 1 through 10. It's up to you. Tracked However, you want to call them out uh, so that the I've other team on the other side is able to understand and know them. Yeah, you just the boss will then appear in the other room, and yeah. the other team will have a chance to do some DPS. And after a bit of DPS, yeah. to stop the boss from wiping, they must then shoot the two correct depends, eyes that were called would out. Need to be Each team will then need to go to the next floor, the and the way side. this is done is yeah. by one person picking up the Taken Essence dropped by the Eye of Ribbon. Yeah. We then look at the pillar in the back of the room and call out which symbol it is. One person will then stand behind the glass on top of that pillar and help direct the person with the Taken Essence to the correct symbol. When standing on top of the crack symbol, the person with the essence will click their grenade mun, and this will then activate the elevator in the back of the room. You then repeat this process in the next room, but each room is doing the opposite of what they just did. Activate the last elevator, and you will be put back into the main room that you started in. Kill ads and watch for the boss. The boss will pop out three times either with tentacles or fire. You must stun the boss at each spot and call out the eyes. The boss will then show up at a fourth spot and you do DPS. As near the end of DPS, you must have people shoot all six of the correct eyes to stop a wipe. You will then stand on all six of the plates that you used to drop initially, but this time when you're dropping, you are going to be shooting pimples on the boss that do a good chunk of damage. Shoot as many as you can to do maximum damage and be careful of flying axions that fly at you when you destroy them. You repeat this process until you have reached final stand. When you reach final stand, you will have to parkour your way up to not get boot by phalanxes, and then you will grab a taken strength at the top. After one person grabs it, everyone will be teleported back into the normal realm, and the boss will pop out in front of you for final stand. Just kill the boss and wait for the boss's mouth to open, run into the mouth, kill the heart, and that's the end of the encounter. This is a very simplified version of a boss fight and may sound very hard to do legit, but it's by far one of the best and most enjoyable encounters in all of Destiny and I would highly highly recommend trying it at least once. Queenswalk is a very fun ending to the raid, although it is very buggy and can have some very dumb wipes happen, but it's just something that we kind of gotta deal with because Bungie doesn't like patching their old raids. Attempt to not switch characters when you reach Queen's Walk, as if you do, it has a high likelihood of bugging out the encounter completely. For loadouts, unless I miss something, it seems like Arc 3.0 no longer gives Warlocks the option for Electro Static Surge, which is unfortunate, so your loadout is more open on that. Titans doesn't really matter what you run, same with Hunters. High mobility helps here, but is not needed by any means. For weapons, things like Eager Edge to be able to catch up if you fall behind or to get ahead, along with good at clear weapons to be able to kill the phalanxes are going to be preferred. Before the encounter starts, one person will be given the fate's chosen buff and will be the only one that is able to start the encounter by picking up the heart. Pick up the heart to start the encounter and while holding the heart you will have a kind of circle aura around you and everyone in that circle will not be getting darkness stacks. If you are outside of the circle, you will get darkness axe, and if they ever reach 10, you will die instantly. You will want to keep moving forward with your teammates somewhat close so they don't get darkness axe, and you are going to walk out the mouth. You will want to be counting down the time left on your fate's chosen buff as when it reaches 0, you and anyone very close to you will be teleported inside the heart. After being teleported, the heart will pick someone on the outside to now be fate's chosen, and they continue forward. Well, in the heart, depending on the amount of people, there would be Taken Strength Orbs spawning. When all the Taken Strength Orbs are grabbed, it resets the timer on the person with the fates chosen, which helps them get more distance. 
The first person to be teleported in is usually always the person waiting to grab the last one. Everyone else will want to be picking up their taken strength orbs on the inside as fast as possible, leaving one for the first person who was teleported in there. When the person with face chosen's timer gets low, usually around 3 seconds, you pick up the last taken strength to reset the timer. Each person can only have their fates chosen timer reset once, so after the first reset, they get as far as they can and then get teleported in. Continue moving forward through the door, then go left until you reach a room with black crystal like taken floor. Go across the room and go right by where the phalanxes were, and you will enter the vault room. Either trees or rock will be open, and you will want to go in the one that is open. Your goal is to make it to stairs, however, you will have to go the long way, so say that rock is open, you will have to go from rock to trees to stairs. If trees is open, you have to go from trees to rock to stairs, you have to go the long way. Once you reach stairs, you drop down the giant hole in the middle and make sure that you have enough time on your timer. Once you are down there, go up the stairs and deposit the heart, and that is the end of the raid. Congrats. You can now get your key, DPS in the middle, and use your key to now open a chest and hopefully get 1k. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it either enjoyable to watch or somewhat informational. Hopefully you'll, you'll learn something, I guess. Um, again, as I said earlier, 99% of the people that watch my videos aren't subbed, so any and all support is greatly appreciated. This kind of completes my D2 raid guides outside of Bow and Kingsfall, but I find them because they're so recent, a lot of the strats haven't changed from people like Dado's videos and all that, and I find um, his videos are usually more well made slash informational. But um, yeah, if you want to see those, let me know. It's either that or I'm planning on doing some trio guides and some more intros into trio raiding. We're making guides for just more higher end low main content kind of um if you want me to do that or cover the newer raids and because you like the way i explain it just let me know in the comments hopefully i've you have been able to understand me more i've been trying to mumble less it's just kind of how i talk just kind of used to it but you know hope, hopefully it's a little bit better um but yeah if you have any suggestions about content constructive feedback always appreciated all that if you have any ideas on what I should do next, let me know. Thank you so much for watching until the very end. Please stay safe and have a great day.